Today on the show, we're going to be talking about how to make even your most basic enemy types look interesting. So, yeah, here we are. Tabletop standard. Let's go. <laughs> so what I've got here are uh, three Reaper. Um, they're just supposed to be town guard, town watch, or whatever. And under normal circumstances, you know, I bet uh, you'd, a lot of people would just be like, well, time to base coat them silver. Call it a day. <laughs> uh, and that would work in... I would say 99% of situations, but we're here to try and do something a little bit more interesting. Eh? So what I've got here is Gorgon Hide by Army Painter and uh, White Sands by Scale Color. Um, I prefer Gorgon Hide just because it gives me a cleaner, cleaner white. <laughs> um, but more to the point, it, it spits out real nice and budge <laughs> he says it spits out real nice and then proceeds to not be able to get it out of his container anymore so. anyway that's going to be tabards that's going to come in a minute um but that does not mean that we are not going to just do a bunch of silver on these guys it just means that that's going to be like kind of a kind of a secondary consideration I got a couple of different silvers here. Uh, this nice, what are your Balthazar gold? Yeah. We're gonna bring out the gold. We're gonna bring out the brass. What are you? Not oh, darker wood. That should do. Uh, this is granite steel. I don't think these guys rate granite steel, but I think they do rate iron warriors. And it wants to open it already. Yes, here it is. So yeah, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go ham with these metallics and uh, do more work on these guys than these schlubs probably deserve. But you know what? Gosh darn it! We're gonna have some fun. So we're gonna crack out the iron hand steel, which is different than granite steel and different than iron warrior steel. <sighs> uh, my usual tactic is always to kind of fob off some of the metallics on the on the weaponry too, because <laughs> it because uh, you're gonna come back with this this color on the gosh dang weaponry at some point. Fortunately, this guy's warped a little bit, so it's all right. Shoddy workmanship. Shoddy workmanship. Okay, so this one's wearing a breastplate. And pauldron. Also got a tabard. And this dude's got some like Shin splints, for lack of a better term. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's got like shin guards. This is like half plate, I think. <laughs> I'm sure any medievalists watching 
the suit that's like, ah, <laughs> what is this armor? It's uh, fantasy nonsense, Professor O'Connor. Shouty to Isabella O'Connor. Stuff in. She likes heavy lenders. Still some misses. But quite a good day. Quite a good flash. All right, so we're going to eschew that fantasy horseradish and we're going to get over to this fantasy horseradish. I've also got a breastplate. Oh. Oh. Got vaccinated the other week, so I guess the 5G is kicking in. God dang it. The problem I'm having is that the bases on the um, you know, Warhammer figs are round. So I don't have to keep adjusting my grip on them to keep a good handle. But I do for these guys because they have these wonky bases. Is this armor? It's like Marika Segmentum and a breastplate and a full plate helmet and a oh gosh. This is the kind of thing medievalists playing role playing games gonna fight over. <laughs> no, it doesn't no, it can't look like that. It's so wrong. It's not historically accurate. It's a fantasy game, Steve. Fantasy has some has to have rules. Darn it. Well, in spite of all that wonkiness, uh, still have gotten a pretty good pretty good start with these guys. So now we move on to the interesting part. At least the slightly more interesting part as far as I'm concerned. Um get the Gorgon hide out. Yeah, it is gonna scoot a little bit out here. It'd be like that some days. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you always put down. <laughs> uh, put down whatever you can to make sure you don't make a mess. Ugh, such a mess, such a mess. On the plus side, though, uh, I'm not going to be running out of this stuff anytime soon. If I can record the sound effect of that splattering, I'm gonna sell it. <laughs> Make a mint. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going over all this uh, stuff that appears to be cloth. Um, all this stuff that's uh, like cloth but not um, leather. 
best I can. I'll kind of come back over the water later. Um, but there is a there is a method to this madness. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back with a uh, find a lighter, more tan, I guess. Look, uh, yeah, XB88 will probably do. Uh, get the friggin' thing out. There we go. Yeah, XB88 should do. to say it's a <laughs> XB88 always kind of looks like just like sick dog poo to me Now, now that I've done this, I will, of course, have to come back around and, like, do a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of, a couple of things hither and yon, like, make sure I get the straps on the armor and the this and the that, uh, which is more difficult than you might think because these are. Well, they're not exactly the world's greatest miniatures. Now, they're perfectly adequate for what they're designed to do. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't own so many of these friggin' things. <laughs> they weren't good. They weren't decent enough. But they, they do have... Um, they have some very distinct and very clear and obvious uh, flaws to them. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, this is not as simple as I was originally thinking it would be. I'm kind of having to work. Almost by touch at this point with some of this stuff. Ugh. On the show, we try and salvage models that I screwed up 10 minutes ago.
Three Lord Brass. There we go. Well, if you're at the point where you hate everything you've done, well, that might actually be a good sign that you're not finished. Well, actually, you know what? That doesn't look half bad. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just... <laughs> this is one of those things where you just kind of got to roll through it, right? Like, oh, this looks like crap. Well, yeah, of course it looks like crap. You're not done with it, idiot. <laughs> So the good news is that I think I, whatever, whatever foul ups I may have inadvertently had, I think I've fixed most of them. So I'm going to come back around with my iron hand steel, pick up the stuff that I missed, sort that out, get that done with. Just kind of get the get cracking on that. Take this opportunity to cover up all of the uh, mistakes that you've made. <laughs> uh, of which there are many. That's okay. Go 
only way you get better is by screwing up multiple times over and over. Why do you think I got so good at this? Yeah. Too much Indian food in the mouth? Eh, not too much. Oh, okay. So, we'll finish that off, and then we're going to get out our Galvorback Red. This kind of angry, burgundy look. And we're just going to put little stripes and dibs and bobs on them. Just kind of like break up the break up the outline sort of thing. Because we want these guys to not just be any regular town schlub guard, so why not just do something new? There we go. I know these may not look like much, but hey, you know what? Now they stand out. Now there's something different. And now they look like their own dudes. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And I'm just going to get into my brown again. Get into the... Because uh, uh, this... Feller's got an axe, so nice simple handle for it. Got a little bit of room to get my belt. All that good. This guy's got a big old halberd. So, so, <laughs> there we go. Get in there and cover up what you might have missed. Get out of there. Little dots hither and yon to just kind of break up the monotony. And there we have it. Three town guards who look distinct and interesting. Well, not taking away from the fact that they are just mooks to get probably slaughtered by your PCs. But you know what? They knew the job was dangerous when they took it. So, there you have it, folks. Three little duders. All painted up in an ex exquisitely simple scheme, but also easy enough. To make them look interesting. And that's really what we're going for. At the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> just kind of making sure I didn't get a Gorgon hide on me. When, I, when it went kersplat. And luckily I seem to have. Uh, been spared the worst of it. But uh, well. You know what. 
things like that happen sometimes. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, for the miniatures rundown, I've been CJ. 